streetwear history wise that's worked has been this like hyper local mm -hmm. thing. So today we're gonna sit with Jordan and go through his brand Hypeland to sort of pick out the elements that are the strongest and areas that he can work on. I'm really gonna be looking for an original concept and like a fresh aesthetic. Hey, yeah. that's good. What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing, Virgil? Jordan, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you, man. You. Pleasure. Dang, you tall, man. Yeah. I was like... That's good. How's it going so far? Pretty good. How are you doing? You got a chance yeah, to Yeah, I got a chance uh -huh. to check it out. That's good. I want to, like, hear more about it. Okay, so I started my brand in 2000, well, two, officially in 2012. It kind of came about in, like, 2010 as, like, a thing between friends in, like, eighth uh -huh. grade. It was more, it wasn't, I didn't start as, like, a, oh, I want to start a brand. It was more so creating T-shirts for my friends. And then yeah. interest started picking up around, like, the public school I went to. And I figured, like, hey... I think I got something going. People were saying like, yeah, you should start a brand, like keep stuff going. Yeah. I remember my first design was like a kind of like a rip of like the Supreme box logo real big up on the t-shirt. Yeah. Um, I figured like, yeah, Supreme was cool at the time. Let me make something that resembled that. I got a lot of heat from it, of course, because it's, you know, yeah. people are like always like, yeah, you got to be original. Can't copy Supreme. So I, you know, I kind of further developed and got into more big graphics because, you know, like at the time, Diamond was really popular. The yeah, hundreds yeah. was really popular. So I was saying like, okay, let me get into like this colorful graphic kind of thing yeah. um in 2012 was when i got my trademark so i trademarked mm -hmm. the name hype land it kind of, the name kind of came out as like a random thing at the time i was really big on like reading hype beasts as like yeah, in like yeah. middle school so i was like okay let me take out the e and hype and i was from la so it was originally called hype la i didn't want to localize myself i've always been interested in like global cultures and things gotcha. like that so i wanted to you know hit that market by cool. just making like some subtle reference to los angeles while being able to cover everything awesome. Cool, so explain sort of what this reference material is that we're looking at. So just as like a general basis, I brought a bunch of images that kind of represent words that represent my brand, things that I pull influence from, kind of how I got started. So I'll start from the left side. So as you see at the top, it's a lot of military references. I like to present my clothes from like a clean and like understated look, and I pull a lot of references from the Army and cartoons. So start from the bottom, you have a lot of military patches. I use the military patches as a way to kind of like bump up the clothes. I've been kind of like maturing with like my design aesthetic, so I've been mm -hmm. trying to offer the graphic piece, but in like a less subtle way. With a patch, there's almost infinite opportunities to kind of give mm -hmm. like some sort of creative expression. And I look at military patches because if you notice, a lot of them have like references to different wars or different events that happens in different wars. So it gives you, you know, mm -hmm. in, like an infinite opportunity when it comes to expressing yourself. So it's not so in your face, like, hey, look at this graphic. It's more like a, yeah. oh, look at this subtle detail. This is, you know, like a nice addition to the piece. I have the military references. I really like the camo prints. You mm -hmm. see the snow camo print. I really like the pockets. I get like a lot of influence from like the military. So, you know, you have like the bomber jackets, really, which are really popular right now. Mm -hmm. The different prints from like bigger, from like other brands. So you have like the snow camo print, the tiger camo print, which is like less used, but it's really, really effective. So I, I really like to use those prints, but not in a loud way that's like standing in your face. Yeah. The reason I put the Olympics uh, in the center with the flags is because that's kind of like the whole message around my brand I like to try and include like the worldwide aspect as you see on like the mm -hmm. wall right there worldwide is like my whole thing I want to I want to be able to create clothes that are that appeal to all audiences I don't I don't want to limit myself to like one demographic so I feel the Olympics is like an event that allows all cultures to get together and you get to see like the different cultural identities mm -hmm. and like different trends which come from different cultures so you know it's like I feel like the Olympics represents my brand because I want to it appeals to all audiences. Also, you have like the sports reference. I grew up like really big on sports, play tennis, basketball. I was really big on that. So I looked into like the fashion. So you have the jerseys, the varsity jackets that come as a result of playing football and basketball. So I've been really influenced in that type of fashion. Like, mm -hmm. let's, last. Um, then over here, you have like a lot of like comic references. I do a lot of research and I like spend a lot of my time reading like old vintage comics. So you'll see a lot of these are like military, controversial like horror comics so you see at the top mystery tales is like a horror comic it's one of my favorite covers mm -hmm. you see the tunnel of nowhere it's, it's really kind of like sci-fi type stuff but i use these comics as like a reference for like graphic influence then you also have the top with the going back to the war references you see like the swastika and like the hitler references from back in the day with the, the war propaganda which kind of gives me influence because i like to create graphics that send like a subtle message but it's not so yeah. in your face so it's, it's more it's more understated, so it's like low-key, but effective at the same time. Okay, so I chose a set of, I think, 12 words that represent my brand. So first off, I chose classic. 
I pick classic because I ha I want to make clothes that are like classic always. Timeless is like a huge thing when it comes to fashion. I don't want to be able to make clothes that are kind of in trend. I want to make things that are like everlasting. So you have brands like Tommy Hilfiger mm -hmm. or Ralph Lauren, Vicious Fubu, like even though they might not be super relevant as they were before, they have those pieces that are classic which always like which you can always be worn. It's like the varsity jacket going back to sports. It's like you can always wear a varsity jacket regardless of who made it or when they made it because it's a classic piece. It's not overdone, but it's enough to where you can like bring it back. It's almost like a vintage like Gucci bag or something like that yeah. or Gucci Louis Vuitton. It's like even though this is, was made in like 20, 30 years ago, you can still wear it today because it holds its value. That's the most important thing of my highest value when it comes to making clothes. I want to make sure the quality is represented in the, in the clothes because without like good quality, you can't have classic clothes. Yeah. You can't be innovative. It's like people pay attention to quality the most. I mean, I know for me more so like you don't, you're more inclined to wear something that's good quality than you are something else and you want your stuff to last. You don't want to, yeah. you know, you don't want to have clothes that are just wear one time and done. You want to have some things that'll last forever. Yeah. My next thing would probably be the progressive aspect. I want to be able to grow with my clothes. It's like, even though trends and things are changing, I want to be able to maintain my brand identity while yeah. progressing at the same time. So. The understated for me was like a really impactful word. This is subtle and you mm -hmm. notice it and it's like, wow, this is almost like a black dress. It's like, this is, it's nothing too spectacular, but mm -hmm. when it comes to the event, it's like, this is an appropriate piece for the event. The global aspect, it goes back to the Olympics with me. So I want to hit like the global market. I want my brand to be worldwide. I want mm -hmm. to appeal to all audiences. Then my last thing is the outerwear. Outerwear for me is like the biggest piece of my brand I like I really like to focus on outerwear I've, especially as I've been maturing as a designer mm -hmm. like getting on the outerwear is like my main focus like I when I first started the brand I told myself I wanted to be like a, a new new kind of north face that mixes like supreme and terms of like other graphics like with the outerwear aspect um, I'm really big on like anoraks, lightweight jackets. I, I feel like I want to fill that void of the transitional jackets. So you have the lightweight jackets for spring, but then you also have like the heavier weight jackets for winter. I want to be that brand that covers every aspect of outerwear, when, especially when it comes to like cut and sew jackets. Like that's my passion when it comes to mm -hmm. clothes. It's like I love cut and sew. I love the more complex jackets, the the patches, the different detail that you can get, the sleek and effective pieces for outerwear. Because like I mean, outerwear is like a like it's like yeah. an infinite. Mm -hmm. abyss when it comes to being creative yeah I think there's like a lot of things that come to mind I think for for your brand but also for like other people taking the course based on like the similar type of approach mm -hmm. to what your brand is I think one of the greatest lessons that I've learned in building sort of like my sort of career path and like streetwear or fashion mm -hmm is in an ironic way is like being very concise mm -hmm. you know i think because your life especially like a young life it's like absorbed by like things that you've been into like very passionately mm -hmm. and then you know when you start a brand you can often try to like whip them all together to mm -hmm. make one big story but it also it surprisingly takes less mm -hmm. for a brand concept the, the less it is the, the stronger it is mm -hmm. the, the more focused the more you know, when your brain starts drawing parallels between, say, like Olympics, uh, Nintendo, and anime, then it, it can start to get a little bit, like, fuzzy mm -hmm. as to, like, what does the brand really mean? You know, like, mm -hmm. the biggest trick in design that I use is just, like, hyper-focus and then repeat. Mm -hmm. You know, make one thing and then it's like a template. Mm -hmm. So... When I see this, I see like seven brands, mm -hmm. you know, seven strong brands. Mm -hmm. Like, an amazing, you said am um, some amazing like things that you might not even realize because you're so like into the whole world. That, you know, th this is you, and then you have one brand. Mm -hmm. You know, it's also smart to think to realize it's like you don't just have one brand in you. Mm -hmm. you know? It's like there could be more. So just going back out of things that I've heard in your sort of pitch that you should consider like focusing in on that and not everything else like mm -hmm. you know obviously like military might be the number one reference in fashion it's utilitarian it's yeah, relevant it's function first mm -hmm. so there's like a brand that can just live in that world there's mm -hmm. also your main concept of this idea of like global you know the idea of olympics that like and you kind of highlighted it um, maybe accidentally when you're talking about the anime you know, it's like the sort of like global thing, but it's like 
it's localized to subtitles here. And mm -hmm. you know, like, that's a super strong concept. Like, you could design collections that were like Japan and US. Your whole world concept, mm -hmm. you know, like, everything could be gone and you could have just talked about this for mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Where, when you put these two together or you draw parallels, like, you can have like hyper specific references, mm -hmm. but those aren't the sort of in your top line. Mm -hmm. You know, like this patch story, this should maybe only be referenced for like a series of outerwear. Mm -hmm. You know, when you try to like make your, your top line concept and then you focus on something that is just like a moment in time, mm -hmm. it can kind of like make it harder to sort of zone in us. But one of the main things is the idea of like, not to be overlooked, it's like mm -hmm. a crazy strong concept, is the idea that every season was just two places in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like this Olympic thing. That's like, you know, that's this worldwide, that's just a few, because what I think I'm trying to overall say is there's a lot, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the worst part is when there's nothing. Yeah. And these aren't like valid concepts. Also like, when it comes to cut and sew, like we'll look at what you're doing, you know, obviously there's classic shapes, but anime, like not looking at it for the art, but looking at it for the garments, mm -hmm. you know, there's like some amazing references mm -hmm. for like this color blocking, like the whole collection could mm -hmm. be only anime, take mm -hmm. everything away. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's just that. A couple of pieces. You mm -hmm. know, this is the most important thing rather mm -hmm. than designing a new t-shirt. It's like mm -hmm. almost like reducing your concept into literally one image and one word mm -hmm. and then letting that sort of like guide everything. That hyper focus is gonna make sure that it's it, every piece reiterates that one thing. One thing, yeah. But mm -hmm. who's your target demographic? Most of my customers, they have the best reaction towards my flag sort of designs when it, when I incorporate yeah. the global Where do you aspect. Sell now? So online, do, yeah, I sell online only. I've done some retail, I've done some trade shows, yeah, yeah. but I find I find online is like more effective and like an easier way to hit like the Where customer. Where are most of the orders going? Um, of course, the United States. So I have like a lot of customers in California, New York. I have a really strong customer base in Australia for like the lightweight jackets. Um, UK, pretty solid. I've I've sold to all 50 states before. I've sold to different like countries. I don't. I don't even know like how many countries. Have you gotten like press on certain? Boards I got. Then... I was posted on High. I think it's, is it called High Snob Society or is yeah. it? Yeah. I was posted on their Instagram. I want to say maybe like three or four weeks ago. Uh -huh. I've done some stuff. I'm on like their what on their what's drop now. I've I've gotten some contacts. I have talked to some people from Hype Beast before, but I've never gotten like an actual post. Yeah, yeah. Did you notice that the High Snobiety thing helped? anything yeah see they posted my more mature stuff so with like the varsity jackets yeah, yeah. and the military reference stuff they posted that stuff and they and like a lot of people react very well to that i say i'm in reference to what you were saying earlier i would say i'm moving more away from the anime graphic kind of thing and i have been focusing on the kind of olympic and patch references just because i've gotten like older because when i first started i was in eighth grade so it was yeah, more yeah. of a like cartoony kind of thing but yeah, as yeah. i've gotten older it's less graphics, it's more sleek, quality focused, cut and sew type stuff with the flags as like the references, like different cultures. I have like different like anoraks and different jackets that represent different countries with different languages. And those often like sell really well. And, and I hit like a new customer demographic every time. Like once I first started selling those worldwide jackets, started making ones for Korea, started getting customers in Japan, started getting more customers in the UK and Canada because it's more of a, oh, let me rep my country. Same, kind of like the Olympics, which is what I was pinpointing on earlier. Mm -hmm. It's a way for me to, hit the demographic of yeah. specific people. So, I mean, as I've gotten older, I've kind of been moving away towards certain things. I mean, some things, like I'll say, for example, like the direct reference with the Naruto and anime is the language references, and I use that to tie back with the Olympics. Mm -hmm. It's like, like the type of designer I am, I pull different aspects from different things. So this is your site. You want to just go through it quick? So... This is the front page. Uh, I use the front page to obviously show new products. So the last products I just released were some worldwide flag hoodies. Kind of goes back to the Olympics. So you see different colors of like the hoodies, different mm -hmm. blues for summer, um, different like the olive tones. I really, I really try to focus on like photography and like the presentation. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the most important piece of a brand. Coming up, I have some new like rugby polos coming out. That's been like the whole thing. And like you'll see like the video game references here with like the Nintendo. I would say I want to show you. 
this one, which is like the more military, the facing tiger stuff. Um, it's like some newer varsity jackets. This, this is like the more recent stuff that I'm going with the more extensive cut and sew, the use of colors, the more subtle references. So you see like the embroidery patches on the front, tackle tool on the back, patches on the sleeves, which gives like the references, the military patch reference with a tiger on the front, mm -hmm. kind of used to represent different cultures. The language reference comes from the anime, like I was saying earlier. I have I didn't spend a, I didn't spend too much time on the about page. I kind of just figured, hey, we're your favorite brand. We make cool and original stuff, influenced by different art, music, and the military cultures around the world. Kind of goes back to what you're saying. This that's like a lot of stuff in terms mm -hmm. of like one thing. It should be focused on one. But I tried to kind of give a glimpse of like what what I pull influence from. So do you have an Instagram? Yeah, I do. How actually. many people follow it? Sixteen thousand. Mm -hmm. And they all real too. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm impressed by the art direction and photography mm -hmm. of the, you know, it gives like a good high quality image to your brand. You mm -hmm. know, like the clothes and all that can only speak so much, but how it's presented is really high level. Mm -hmm. Thank I you. think, you know, it adds to your concept. You know, that's how I sort of can gauge, you know, what a brand's about page is is like, like what's on the home page mm -hmm. and then this is I wanted to show you this shoe this is kind of like what got me like a little traction a little bit I made like some tiger camouflage jackets which is the mm -hmm. background image you see um, this is one of my first cut and sew ventures it's a real like lightweight rain jacket you'll see I have some samples over there that I'll show mm -hmm. you later but um, with embroidery uh, on this one you'll notice like I have the patch detail as well that I mentioned so you'll see like the snake patch so it's not it's not too too much branding, but it has like that subtle graphic reference to where it's not yeah. too much. Because you know, on like a tie, on like a, a print jacket, it'd be way too much to have a print and a graphic. It's almost like yeah, yeah. doing too much in your face. Um, Let's look see. at some stuff. So then, this is one of my favorite jackets I actually wore today. The face and tiger varsity jacket I showed you, full embroidered front, got the tackle tool embroidered on the back, satin inside. It's pretty soft, hidden pockets. I have I pay attention mm -hmm. to a lot of details, so I have like my RN number. Labels on the inside. I feel like that's very important to branding. People pay a lot of attention to that. Mm -hmm. Have the custom ribbing. I mean, you can see the quality for yourself if you like to see. It's pretty nice material, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Pay a lot of uh, attention to like the patches and things like that. Streetwear, in a way, like isn't fashion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know? Like, there's an ironic debate that could be had about fashion and streetwear. You know, mm -hmm. they're one and the same. They're very different. I mm -hmm. think one thing, like a a general statement, is like fashion quality is like you know it's it's beyond quality mm -hmm. it's like art it's like mass it's why Hermes exists mm -hmm. you know it's like not every leather brand why isn't every leather brand Hermes, like Hermes? Yeah. and mm -hmm. it's like to make that level of product is a is a is the definition of quality mm -hmm. and I think streetwear it's the genre within fashion that sort of owns not yeah, for lack of a better term, just bad quality. Mm -hmm. You know, like streetwear doesn't have to be Hermes. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a sort of like, there's an honesty about the quality that, which makes military, you know, military, it's luxurious in a way mm -hmm. because it's, it's like the labeling, the fabric. Mm -hmm. It's so utilitarian. It never once wanted to be fashion. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not Hermes, mm -hmm. but hits the same sort of like, Poignant, like every button on a military, mm -hmm. every metal hardware, every zipper, every pocket, mm -hmm. every stitch yeah. is sort of like, you know, which is sort of like contemporary streetwear is just this sort of like reality mm -hmm. based. All that gets me to like, you know, like fabric, like if it competes towards fashion, then it's almost unachievable to make it in any other place than like where a Saint Laurent jacket is made because mm -hmm. that quality is to the maximum, maximum yeah. of mm -hmm. that. Which I think for your concept, like of course quality is what you're trying to achieve, but it's almost like not phrasing it or trying to compare it to something that's like, fashion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the the longevity of the concept of streetwear comes when when we all collectively own the exact mm -hmm. like space that we operate. Mm -hmm. And like if you look at brands like the best streetwear brands that have like that are the most successful mm -hmm. they're they're not Hermes but their their quality doesn't dictate how strong the brand is yes, and nor yeah. do they like 
like an Hermes has to like lean on the crutch mm -hmm. of that. This is the best quality mm -hmm. because that's what the that's whole, what their brand is about. They, yeah, they scrap thousands of pieces of leather just to find one, mm -hmm. and that's what that's what you're, they're selling. Mm -hmm. So streetwear, the strongest brand, they're sort of not. None of them are like claiming to be like, hey, this is the best made, mm -hmm. you know, cotton or wool or something like mm -hmm. that. So I think. You know, because this is this is like just being very critical. The quality is like it could go up like thirty steps from here, but mm -hmm. it's not. That's not what the brand to me. I wouldn't put that in your pitch because it's mm -hmm. not. You would have to be Hermes and it's yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. Your strength is more in like your point of reference, and that mm -hmm. this jacket is probably affordable. Mm -hmm. How much is this? It's only a hundred ten dollars. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. it's like replace quality with like available mm. you know i get a lot of flack for my own brand being like really expensive but mm -hmm. a part of my concept is to make streetwear in the factories that make louis vuitton mm -hmm. you know so it's like in my pitch of my whole brand none of it is ever about being affordable mm -hmm. you know that's not my on my sort of mood board mm -hmm. i'm aiming to do something completely like different that. than mm -hmm. what's sort of like streetwear mm -hmm. you know in a way but this course is about streetwear this is a streetwear brand mm -hmm. i see that the integrity and the mood of these patches the the imagery the meaning the campaign is about something else mm -hmm. you know it's not to say either to like not strive mm -hmm. for the highest quality that's not meant to be like a deterrent but it's like when it comes into like the snap button for example there's mm -hmm. like legit 60 you know, some there's there's snap buttons here that could cost as much as the whole jacket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. when you, and I strive. I tell kids all of the time to like go into Hermes and go into Saint Laurent mm -hmm. and look at their bomber jacket. Yeah, I, I'm, I, yeah. And then it's like you can just see that the you know the types of ribbing that they use is that like are, it's like much it's thicker. It's like, like a whole you know ribbing is a knit mm -hmm. right, so it's like woven mm -hmm. like. It, once you get past like the apex or like the, the ceiling that is streetwear, you'd think that there's only one type of ribbing, mm -hmm. you know, but this is knit just like a sweater. Mm -hmm. So you could do anything, you know, the pattern, the we, you know, this, the yarn mm -hmm. can fluctuate in price. You know, mm -hmm. you can get the yarn that's just as much as the whole jacket. jacket. Yeah. And, you know, to me, it's like people are buying into your brand. Mm -hmm. you, that's what you want them to buy into. You want them to buy into your brand. Just as much as the individual pieces. Mm -hmm. So as, as long as this represents the brand, mm -hmm. then, you know, and everything you've been saying about the language, the different type of, like, cultural sort of piece, it exists here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this kind of goes, these are my more popular items, the flag references. So this is like an anorak. This is like my top seller, like, yeah, the highest piece. I'm working on, like, a new cut, and so this is a sample of it. So you'll see, like, some... There's some funny, some funny information that I just got yesterday, you know, because a lot for me, streetwear is about dialogue. So it's mm -hmm. like talking, traveling. Mm -hmm. I suggest traveling a bunch. Certain countries don't like their own flag. Did you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I might be wrong, but it was like an Asian country that, like, if you use their typography on clothing, they won't wear it. That's the the, the conundrum that is global culture. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about different cultures necessarily don't sort of praise their culture. In mm -hmm. a way. Just something to keep in the back of your mind. Because mm -hmm. I, I think that's a minor detail. Again, like I love this. Mm -hmm. I love opening ceremony mm -hmm. jackets. Like when you look at the opening ceremony, this feels mm -hmm. like what Canada would wear, mm -hmm. you know. Let me see then. These are like the flag hoodie I showed you. This is a new piece I just released. They, this is like probably like the one piece that sold out like the fastest in terms of like stuff I made. Mm -hmm. It was an old design. I made it in 2000. 13 is like a year anniversary with just like prints on the sleeves and then I figured this year now that I'm able to like get into like cut and sew and like make little different garments I figure I make the embroidery on the sleeves um, Embroidery on the chest and like get into like more yeah. cut and sew garments. How instead much of, is this? That online is $65. Mm -hmm. So it's not super expensive. I yeah. think the cotton is pretty I made the cotton pretty lightweight because it's about to get into like the summer season yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to make anything too heavy even though I have access to like the Canadian fleece and like mm -hmm. those the in grain cotton the 350 yeah. GSM 400 like you know about all that stuff yeah. so I mean I wanted to make like a lighter weight 
fleece hoodie, so it's not you know super heavy for summer springtime. Yeah, it's good. This was made for wintertime two years ago. This is like a sample. Got the embroidery on the back. Mm -hmm. It's kind of similar to the shirt that I'm wearing right now. Has the inside print. I kind of like the contrast. I really like contrasting color prints. Yeah. So since to go along the whole idea of like the smoke and death, I kind of put the cigarette butt print on the inside. Mm -hmm. Just kind of to make the whole similar thing. It's like the front embroidery. You can see like it's not a patch. Uh, side weight, you can feel it if you want to. It's like yeah. cotton twill. Yeah. It's, like real, it's like pretty heavy jacket mm -hmm. just for one at a time. To me, it's just about organizing, mm -hmm. you know, and I think like all the different stories, if you want the brand to be this wide, mm -hmm. it needs to be like clear delineation, like this season is about this one thing, mm -hmm. you know, so if it's about smoking, then I want to see you know, also like all the imagery for all the different collections sort of like look the same, mm -hmm. irreverent to the concept that is a part of that one story. So mm -hmm. if it's like about military camo, it should be set on a military base. Like, mm -hmm. look, not always in nature. Or, mm -hmm. You know, I see there's a, like a variance, but I'm just saying things to like think about. Mm -hmm. Like the smoking thing should be all shot in a convenience store or mm -hmm. something like that. Just so all your different stories. So it's like the brand is wide. It's like this global concept, but every season kids can be dialing into like, oh, this one's about smoking. This one's about... You know, that flag hoodie should just be like a can constant carryover. It's like mm -hmm. a part of your permanent collections. It's sort of mm -hmm. like the thing that makes the most money, the hats, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Those are sort of like trans-seasonal. Yeah. It's, and that's what this course is. It's like, it's not being about design. It's creative directing your mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. You know, you're right in sort of like focusing on outerwear because not a lot of people do. But mm -hmm. again, it's like less is more, mm -hmm. you know. I think that you should have more than like, for a brand that's at, the, at this pace and you can add personality to your silhouettes, it's like three, three outerwear pieces, mm -hmm. six t-shirts, I think, do you do pants, like any bottom? No, I'm, I'm actually getting to that right now, like during the summertime. Yeah, I would just like, your collection should just be on like, like scrolling just down twice, those amount of things, like mm -hmm. very concise and then look at the personality that you're adding to the outerwear pieces, the mm -hmm. t-shirts, you know, bag, accessorize it out a bit, merchandise it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's gotta be, all your storytelling should be sort of in the propaganda for that Peace. collection, mm -hmm. not just overall everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. And then it, then when people come across it, they're gonna be like, oh, like, I get it. You know, these, his moods change per season, but, mm -hmm. It's very strict. I think just overall, like, strictness will, you'll see the growth go further. Mm -hmm. And what, you know, by my question asking, like, has it been on a blog? Has it, you know, it's like you have the audience that you speak to, but in streetwear, you know, that ha you have to, you have to do what you're doing, but you also have to do it in a way so that it grows. Mm -hmm. And to see that growth, it's going to take that strictness mm -hmm. so that you know you be, you get better a bigger audience mm -hmm. based on the work that's being done mm -hmm. that's the that's kind of my overall feel mm -hmm. to me like where i started off with it's only like this mm -hmm. because it's not to say that these all go away and then you mm -hmm. like put them in a folder they all just go to the background mm -hmm. And you pull in certain things, certain but it's like this year, like when you talk about your brand, I should only know this. It's a construct, mm -hmm. you know, it's not, it's a way that your brand stands for this. That way you can always go into Canada. You can always go into like a sort of military nuance thing, but it's always related to this sort of global concept. Like mm -hmm. one of the best pieces of advice that I have and like, my career is being able to love something and then like throw it in the trash, <laughs> you know, like, cause you're not really beating up a concept. Mm -hmm. So like, do you love the name? Well, that's a, that's an interesting point because I've considered changing the name multiple times. And that's one piece that I've like, when I've talked to like multiple people, they either like love it or they hate it. Yeah, yeah. It's no in middle between. ground in between. Yeah. And then what a lot of people will say in, in regards to the name is like the newer stuff that I have coming out, 
it come like completely ne- negates the name because it's like yeah. the when you they say when you see the name it's kind of like an immature kind exactly. of thing because like the hype well, kind of thing it, you yeah. started it before you got to where you were at exactly and I think in streetwear like it's it's all freedom you know there's mm-hmm. no rules to it but that's what I mean not being afraid to just like it's still you it's still mm-hmm. the same thing it's only sixteen thousand people that know mm-hmm. if you switch it but think about not holding on to it for sake of like, oh, I started it, but mm-hmm. like, do you get more freedom in your concept? Has your concept matured? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, look at the path as it would go if it was here, but if you did like a crazy rebrand, mm-hmm. but also that allowed you to like represent your new sort of mood as a designer, it would go up like this. Mm-hmm. Just being not married to the idea that I can't mm-hmm. because I have the people that are already following it. Because I think that freedom is what's going to actually get you to your your overall goal. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, Pyrex, like, I immediately knew that that wasn't something that I wanted to, like, be at a dinner 10 years later saying, like, what's your brand name? Mm -hmm. You know, like, cookware. It was about a moment in time. Mm -hmm. And I think it adds interest to me. As far as I'm concerned, I like things that existed for a period of time. Mm -hmm. So... That all ultimately comes to like post stuff for you to think about and sleep on, but I don't know of a brand that is like wholeheartedly taking on this global Olympic type mm-hmm. concept within streetwear. You know, okay. everything streetwear history wise that's worked has been this like hyper local, mm-hmm. you know, palace thing. It's like yeah. if you know where that operates, you it's it's a London thing, mm-hmm. it's a New York thing. Mm-hmm. No one has properly tackled the concept of it being like, you know, this network of things that exist. You know, mm-hmm. you could go, this could be huge mm-hmm. if that's what you wanted it to be. No, you that's, know, I mean, that's what I've been focusing on. It could also be like, you know, you could go to buy a plane ticket, go do a collection, make something hyper-specific with a store in Copenhagen. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you have new product. It's super authentic because it was made there. Mm-hmm. And then boom, you have a store that's also doing the marketing. Right now, you're just working for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, as you go on over, like, the next time period, mm-hmm. like, you should be thinking, not necessarily, that's why collabs work. It's mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm going to do a collaboration with this brand or this model or this website. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, they start talking about it, and then you're talking about it, and now you have two people talking about mm-hmm. the same thing, which is going to grow your audience. Mm-hmm. Right now, if all your stuff is just kind of, going to your audience is sort of insular. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, it's growing at its smallest rate. Right, yeah. You know, that's why it's important. The, it's, it's the same way a major brand, you know, they spend like tens of millions on advertising or they, it's seen, you know, they're, or, they're already past the hump. But mm-hmm. that's, you know, besides any sort of like garment, fabric, you know, how you should organize the collections, how you should do this, like, it's important for two like other students watching. It's all variables. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like thirty things, but as long as you get like twenty of those thirty things, like tracking towards the right direction, mm-hmm. you know, you could keep all this. Mm-hmm. Like you could keep all the, the the wide. It could be a little bit non-defined. It's all stuff to think about. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can keep everything as it is. You can sort of focus on drawing more attention to it. You can focus on the quality. But I think overall you have, you've shown that you have like the mental depth mm-hmm. and articulateness behind your ideas. Mm-hmm. The next step forward for me would be seeing that it just becomes more clear. Mm-hmm. You know, I think you'll see, you'll see that do well for yourself, but also setting goals, like I was just saying about making sure that the work is working for you, Mm -hmm. you know, at an exponential rate. There's Mm -hmm. ways to do that within just what you're focusing on. Like your end goal might just be like, oh, let me just make the collection and put it up on my site. But Mm -hmm. I think you should set a goal of having an editorial feature on Mm -hmm. Hypebeast or selling it at Hypebeast on their site, Mm -hmm. you know, like finding local ways, you know, finding a rapper locally and being like, hey, I'm going to do your whole tour. It's mm-hmm. going to be this. And then you post it on your Instagram and I'll give you all the clothes that you need and I'll do your merch. Mm-hmm. You know, like that way you're working on your brand, but it's also like an outlet mm-hmm. for someone else to like 
speak about it as well. Mm -hmm. That's how you can like grow the concept. Mm -hmm. Out of everything that this sort of quick meeting has had, what sort of resonates with you? I mean, you make a good point in terms of like focusing on one type of demographic or one type of focus. I will probably focus on the flag and the Olympic aspect and mm -hmm. reaching the global audience just because I've also, it's, it's not the first time I've received that type of feedback. I've actually had customers say like, the best stuff that I made has been the flag stuff. Because like you said, there is no brand aside from like, maybe like you have North Face or something that covers like yeah, yeah. different things like that. But there is no brand that's hyper-focused. It's always either, I'm from LA, I'm from New York, I'm from Chicago. So I also look at making like another brand. It's not, it's, it's ironic that you say that also, mm -hmm. because I actually looked into like making another brand with like a more mature name, because I feel that words I can continue this one, I have more designs that I kind of want to separate from the high plan yeah. name that I've been making lately that is kind of just like, uh, this is not, yeah. this doesn't really fit my customer demographic. And what I've noticed also is as I've been kind of like showing some customers some of the more mature stuff, they're not reacting too well because they're like, unlike, they're not like me, they're not growing. They're yeah, more yeah, so yeah. like, Stuck. I want, they want, I want this at this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I'm more like, I'm getting into this higher fashion. Like I've been looking at like the Raph Simmons, the, the real complex, like straight up, like good quality, like, subtle, no yeah. focus, like lots of stuff. So I'm gonna definitely focus on isolating the the one reference with the worldwide thing. And I guess I'll just have these concepts to like supplement it more so, taking different aspects from it. So like you're saying the color block and using it in a way yeah. that it complements this. So it's not direct like, oh, this is a language. This is just colors that I took from it. So maybe yeah. like if I want to take an orange and black or something, yeah. got it from Naruto. Or yeah. like the military reference, like the placement of patches and the camos yeah. and the pockets and the, the usefulness of the clothes and using the propaganda or like using the comics as a way to send a message but not yeah. super direct. You get what I'm saying? Makes sense. So perfect. Yeah, thank you, man. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Anytime.